Hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me on another of my interviews. Today I'm talking to a very interesting man, Sovereign Pete. That might give you a clue on to what we're going to be talking about. This is the Sovereign Project, a project that is designed to link people who are sovereign together and to help those who want to be free. Pete, welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you with me this afternoon. Thank you very um, much. It's good to be here. We, as you may know on the channel, may not know, we've been talking about natural law, common law, sovereignty, all of this, and had many different guests who have a different look at, look at sovereignty. You're called the Sovereign Project, so if anyone knows anything about sovereignty and stuff, it should be you. I think there's we've never been in a time where being sovereign is more important and um, a lot of people are obviously interested in that and how you become sovereign, what you need to do, is it complicated, is it easy, and all of that. So hopefully we can explore some more about that. So maybe we yes. could just start with uh, a little bit about yourself and how you sort of thought about sovereignty and becoming sovereign and then what the project's about. Sure, yeah. Um, it all began years ago. We're talking almost 30 years ago when we had access to the internet for the first time. It was in the 1990s, early 92, so I got my first computer. And I knew that I was being lied to. Whenever I used to see something on the TV, I think, hang on a minute, I'm being lied to. This is not, this is not correct. So I'd go off and do some research. And um, over time, I began, I began researching everything that the government does or did or said and found the truth. Um, this has covered many different topics. The first one I, I delve into was climate change, which is completely bogus, um, mm. a complete scam. <laughs> um, so I got into that and um, I started researching other things like 9-11 happened, started researching that. Um, that led me onto the financial system. Then I realized that there was a great reset coming. Um, I realized they were gonna reset the financial system uh, around 2025. This is in about 2010 is when I figure this out and I thought I'd better start warning people so I was starting to warn people back then and and as I was doing my own personal journey um, I was realizing um, that we'd been conned or scammed by people within government and what I found out is I dis I discovered how government actually operates and one of the things that people don't understand is government is in fact a legal fiction corporation mm. so the UK is a corporation okay so this led me down the, the rabbit hole of trying to learn. Uh, and I also had to relearn to read. So the average person out there is illiterate. <laughs> you might be able to recognize text on a piece of paper, but you can't read because you don't understand the meaning behind the words. And this is where so many people are failing and getting caught up in the system. Now, when I decided to actually set up the, the Sovereign Project was just after 2020. Obviously, a certain incident happened. <laughs> And everyone was panicking over a certain medical procedure and they were being mandated to have this. And I was looking at everybody, what, what's the problem? Don't you understand how mandates work? Mm. You, you can't be mandated without a contract. Contract comes first, you agree and consent to the mandate, then the mandate comes second. And this is when I realized that the average person has no clue how contract law works at all. Yeah. But the average person doesn't even know the difference between lawful and legal. And perhaps well, we can get into that. Yes, no, absolutely. I know that we've been sort of talking about this, and I think you're right. You know, people forget that they have consent to, to things. And some people are not aware, as you say, not aware of contracts yes. and think that contracts is something that you just do with, say, a utility company and you've got to sign to their agreement. And it's very one sided. And, and of course, it shouldn't be. No. In fact, utility companies is not even a contract. It's a service agreement. Right. And you are the one who controls it. <laughs> this is what people don't understand. You control the service agreement, not them. <laughs> You're the customer. The customer yes. is always right. So, yes. Um, so the contract stuff, people don't understand what a contract is. So let's just touch on what law uh, versus legal is, because mm. people... People have got to get the basics right before you understand how the whole system operates. And hopefully we'll have time. We'll get into that. Hmm. Now, law is something beyond your reach. OK, you cannot change it. It's beyond man's grasp. OK, for example, the law of gravity. If I drop this pen, it goes down. OK, yeah. so there we go, everybody. I'll just get on. It goes down. 
Yeah. I can't change that law. I can't make the pen go up. So that's law. Law is something you can't change, okay? It's beyond your grasp. Legal always means contract. So whenever you hear that word, if someone says you've done something illegal, what they're actually doing is they are referring to a policy within a contract. So when the policeman pulls you over, by the way, policeman means policy enforcer, and that would be a corporate policy enforcer. Policemen do not deal in law. So a policeman pulls you over, says you've done an illegal U-turn. And you go, oh, okay, then. Can you show, show me the contract then where I've agreed to it? <laughs> and of course they can't. They can't There's because no they've contract. actually tri- they've tripped. They've, there is a contract, but they've tricked you into it. Right. And they can't tell you the truth because then their deception will be um, shown to you. So they do it because well, the way they do it is because you registered your car with DVLA. And once you've de- uh, registered your car with DVLA, you've accepted the highway code. And that is the contract that you've accepted. And now the policeman's pulling you over because you've breached a policy within the DVLA corporation contract. Does yes. that make sense? <laughs> yes. It, and just, I don't, I don't want to stop your flow by interrupting uh, very often. But if you don't know that you've entered into a contract, from my understanding, and which is very, very small, and I'm learning this all the time from people like yourself. If you don't know, it's not fully disclosed to you. So in theory, it should be null and void. But um, effectively, they don't treat you like that because you've <laughs> had, you've registered the title of that vehicle and you've entered into the contract. And so that's the, they assume. And I guess this is down to the presumptions, but no doubt we'll get onto all of that. Absolutely correct. You have to have informed consent. That's the key word here. Okay, you can't just be tricked into a contract. Say, for example, uh, a car salesman was going to sell you a car that had 250,000 miles on it, but he wound it back to only 50. He didn't tell you, but you've entered into a contract to buy the car. Mm. Well, that's not informed consent. You were not informed that the car was clocked. So informed consent is key. Okay. in fact, there's, there's, there's four basic areas that I try and help people with. First of all, the burden of proof is placed on the one making the claim. So if so, it doesn't matter who it is, it could be a policeman, a bailiff or whatever. It could be someone sending you something through the post. It does not matter. If they are making the claim, the burden of proof is on them. So don't panic. Don't think you've got to prove anything. You go, no, 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 no. You've made a claim. Burden of proof is on you. You've got to prove your claim. And then there's areas that you should be challenging. One is obligation. This is where most people don't even understand obligation at all. It's like the mandate stuff. I'm saying, are you even obligated to do it? No, you're not. Mm. If people understood obligation, so you challenge the obligation. Am I obligated to pay the thing or do the thing? For example, council tax. Am I obligated to pay it? Turns out I'm not. I'm not obligated to pay it. There is no contract between me and the council. The council is a legal fiction corporation. It's a private, privately owned, for-profit corporation. No different than McDonald's. Do I have a contract with the Leicester City Council, the Derby City Council, whatever council? No, I mm. don't. Am I obligated to pay them? No, I'm not. Then there's authority. So, I'm just going to inter- interrupt you on that one because yeah. the, the, um, two things, and I'm hoping I can hold both of those thoughts in my head Go at ahead. the same time. I would try. <laughs> Firstly, there is a, a barrister... I won't mention his full name, but people will know, you you know, who. but he's he's very into sort of martial arts. Shall we just say that (laughs) Um, that might identify him who has made over the last 12 months a number of claims that this sort of information is bogus and rubbish. And that and I I noticed somebody sent me a link actually to his um, to a comment that he made that said, no, the law is made by the government. And the way you know that is if you go to the government's website, it tells you and you just think. Oh, Circular so another, argument. Yeah, so it's like I make the law and here's a page I've written that says I've made the law, which is absolute nonsense. The other thing, which now has alluded, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. It always happens. I it always to happens that. about oh. the... Oh, oh, yes, so, yes, I've remembered the other thing is an argument that, that seems logic to me is if, you, if you're born and you have nothing... One thing that you must, everyone must surely agree to, is that you have the right to shelter. That, you, you know, you, you haven't got the right, uh, sorry, you shouldn't not have the right to shelter. In other words, you're just allowed to perish. If, therefore, you've got the light, right to shelter, you should be able to have some sort of house with a roof on it. If that's the case, yes, 
why do you have to pay a tax just to shelter? Because it's impossible to buy a house without having to have a, ta a, a tax, okay. which is the council tax. Right, and, OK. There's a lot to unpack there. Oh, right. Sorry about okay, that. OK, so let I me just... I didn't, I just I, well, I don't want to throw you from your, no. your basic tenants so far because you, you're fine. going really well. This, this is, you're making <laughs> it so clear. Uh, this is what I really in, I'm, I'm enjoying about this. Whereas people have tried to put these points across and perhaps they've been a bit sort of sloppy and what have you, but you're doing so... You, you, you obviously okay. live and breathe this. Thank you. Well, th th this is what I tend to do is I tend to... Um, crunch through a lot of legalese paperwork nonsense i've been doing it for decades and i right. i distill it down into a language that people can understand and i talk in layman's terms uh, but let's go back to rights now the thing with rights rights are not there to give you resources okay so you can't say you ever have a right to something because then that has to be provided to you so if i said for example i have a right to this cup of coffee mm -hmm. And that means someone has to provide me with this cup of coffee. Well, that makes them a slave. If they have to do what I will, because I say it's my right to have this cup of coffee, then they have to be a slave to me. But right. going back to your shelter thing. Yes. Now, we've got to try and understand what rights are. There's a lot of people get this wrong, okay? Rights operate within your jurisdiction and within your uh, dominion. OK, and rights are a package deal. This is another thing that people don't understand. You just don't get rights on their own. And you, you only get rights when you've reached the age of consent. All right. This is another thing that people have got to understand. Children don't have rights. All right. Because a right comes in a package deal. And I'll explain this. So a right comes with your authority, your court, your law, your jurisdiction, and it's your freedom. Now, children operate in the jurisdiction of the parents, okay? Mm. By the way, everyone listening in, I'm using the word child and parent as the Oxford English Dictionary, not Black's Law. Hopefully, everyone understands that parent and child are legal terms, okay? Uh, parent is the pair who pay rent, and um, child is chattel. <laughs> That's the parent who pays rent. Yeah, the yes. pair who pay rent, because what you've become, when you're a parent, yeah, what rent. you've become is you've given up your child to the state. The state owns them. Yes. You become a parent and then you must pay the state to have your children. Children means chattel. So if you're dealing with social services and you knock on your door and say, um, are you the parents? Are they your children? And you say, yes, they're going to take your kids. Right. Because you've admitted you're the pair, parent. Parent. But if you say I'm the mother and father. Correct. If I'm the mother, I'm the mother or father. And that's my boy or girl social services can't move on you well they'll still try if you've registered yes. the child because obviously if you've registered the child then technically the state owns the child okay now in reality they don't now what i try and do is a lot of people are panicking over the um the system they're panicking oh my god oh my god you know the the living in fear no no the system is so fragile it's unbelievable when you learn how it works you'll be laughing because you'll be able to work past the system you can operate above the system this is what we do at the sovereign fraternity we operate above the system well we're learning to now going back to the uh to the rights to the rights yes and we can if we get time we get back to the child and the registration of the birth certificate rights okay so when you have a right you have to have your your authority to enforce it okay and you have to use your court to do so now this is something that's been stolen from us See, everyone thinks you go to court. Mm. You can't go to court. If you go to court, you're going to someone else's court, aren't you? Yes. That means you're in someone else's jurisdiction. You've given up your authority. They have control over you. You can't go to court. My court is here with me all the time. Every one of Each one of us has our own court. Only a sovereign can actually call a court. And a sovereign is a living, breathing man or woman, not a titled um, king or queen. Right? They're a constitutional sovereign, in title only, and they're beneath you. So only a sovereign can hold court. Well, that's me. Hmm. So I hold court. I make the law. Within my jurisdiction, within my dominion, I make the law. No one else. This is another thing that's a lie. Like this uh, certain barrister that w will remain nameless. Governments cannot ever make law. You can't do it. First of all, it's a legal fiction. It does not exist. Right? Hmm. Parliament is a private corporation, the same as McDonald's. We have no contract with Parliament. Now, if you vote for your MP to get into Parliament, there's no contract between you and him. 
He doesn't work for you anymore. He works for a private corporation called Parliament. They make policies. Those policies do not apply to you unless you accept them. They do not make law. You can't make law. Law, like I said before, law is something you can't control. Yes. It's beyond our reach. All right. So what are they doing? They're actually creating policy, legislation. The word legislator means offerer of law. They go, oh, so this is what they're doing. They're offering me a contract. You can have law within a contract. Like me and you, we can enter into a contract and say every Wednesday you've got to wear a yellow T-shirt. That will be law for us because we've signed the contract. Yes. So also the legal system operates in colour of law as well. <laughs> it's artificial. So it's colour of law, courts of colour, warrants of colour, all this. This is how they do it. And they only deal in articles which are artificial. They, they deal in administrative courts that are um, courts de jure. So court de jure means they don't deal in law. They're telling you this. They're yes. telling you we don't deal in law. In fact, they even say we are courts of law. Well, of means without in legalese. So if, if it's of something, it's without the thing. <laughs> you couldn't make it up, really, uh, <laughs> except know. somebody has. <laughs> they have. This is a system that goes back thousands of years, and they've been chipping away, chipping away. And you've got to learn how to read before you can even attempt to decipher what it is they're doing. Yes. So go back to rights. Yes, rights do not give you resources. So you can never say, I have a right to a house, I have a right to a car, I have a right to a coffee, because that means they have to be provided to you. Right, now, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, can you, so, that, so the illusion that the... the, the sorry, not the illusion. The um, example that I gave that it, it, I was sort of saying, in theory, yep. you should have... No one should stop you from having shelter, I suppose, is what I was That's trying to... That's correct. Yes, no one should be able to stop. So I was saying you should have a right to do it, but you sh no one should stop you from saying, I want a roof over my head yes. because when it rains, I don't want to get cold. And, and, correct. You know, who's going to argue with that? But no one, therefore, should tax you because you just want to protect yourself. Correct. And, it's, and of course, in this country, you can't just... In theory, to in legal terms, you, yep. you have to be very careful how I speak now. Uh, in legal <laughs> terms, in their world, you can't just build a house and and have that shelter because okay. they'll come along and say, "Well, okay, we'll have some council tax from you, please." Yes. You go, well, where did I agree that? I'm just sheltering in my house. Thank you very much. Correct. Correct. Now we've got to get into the language. Language is key. This mm. is how these bureaucrats, these parasite bureaucrats who have been stealing our wealth for decades and centuries. And by the way, they're stealing about 95% of our wealth now. We're living on 5% now. It's getting critical. And they want it all, by the way. It's all done in the language. So going back to the rights thing, yes, mm. you're, you're correct. So rather, it's, the language is key. Instead of saying, I have a right to a house, it, you should be saying, no one has the right to take away my house. Right, yes. You flip the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's the thing. You see, these devious politicians will trick people, right? And what they'll do is they'll get you all excited and say, you have the right to health care. And everyone will go, cheer, yeah. And they'll vote in the MP. But what this MP is not telling you is he's not saying rights. He's actually saying privileges and allowances. Here's the thing. Your rights are yours. They come from you. OK, mm. you know, now, if you're religious, you can say it comes from your God. That's not a problem. You can say I've got divine rights from my God. That's fine. But make sure you define your God. Do not go into these courts and say I my rights come from God because those courts use a different God. And we can get into that if we've got time. So your rights are yours. They come from you. If you ever say your rights come from someone else, you're always going to be a slave because they are the ones who are controlling it. Right. Yes. Yes. Like who it. gives them the right to tell you? Absolutely correct. Absolutely. If we, especially if, you know, if, if we're all born equal and no one's above the law, Correct. who gives them the right to suddenly tell you what to do? Exactly. But they're being deceptive with the language. They will pull you into a constitution. That's how mm. they'll do it. Now, the thing with a constitution, that's a trap. There's loads of traps within the system, right? There's like the Magna Carta and all the rest of it. And people go, oh, Magna Carta this or constitution that. No. Here's the thing. Any constitution, like you know, like in America, that's. Very, I know we've got one here. Well, sorry, not we. I've got nothing to do with Britain or the UK, so I, I slipped up myself. I should not have used the the word we. 
I know there's a constitution here within this corporate country, not within the UK. Um, anyway, America. So they've got a constitution and everyone's going Second, Second Amendment, right to bear arms. And I go, no, no. You already have the right to bear arms. If you're pointing at a document written by someone else and you're saying that's where I get my rights, they can take those rights away. Yes. Okay? yes. Now, the, the thing with a constitution is a constitution, no citizen, civilian or member of the public is ever protected by or has access to any constitution. A lot of people think they're protected. No, you are not. So here's the thing. A constitution, not like in America. Can an American citizen change the constitution? Can he phone up Biden and say, hey, Biden, I want to make an amendment? Good point. <laughs> no, yeah, that's you it. You can't change it. So if you can't change it, then it's not going to protect you. Now, the thing is, is these constitutions are not written in sort of English. There's a hidden meaning behind them. They sound fluffy and nice on the face of it and that is the trap that makes you get pulled into it so you think oh the constitution i'm protected by it no if you accept the constitution what that does is it makes you a citizen that's a legal title citizen means slave to the city yes. you are the lowest of the low so you're now a slave to the city you've accepted the constitution that makes you a constitutor and you go oh okay what's a constitutor what's what's that mean Constitutor is the person who, through agreement, has agreed to pay the debts of someone else. So who are you paying the debts? The state. Yes. So if you accept the Constitution, okay, then that makes you a constitutor, which means you've agreed to pay the debt of the state, i.e. the national debt. By the way, the national debt is what the government owes us. <laughs> That's what they owe us, that money. <laughs> So yeah, I'd like it back, please, because I'm the yeah. creditor, by the way, so I'd like it back. So, yeah, um, constitution, you've got to be very careful. So we'll get back onto the um, council tax stuff and how they trick you. Mm. This is how they do it. It's all in the language. Now, you're absolutely correct. No one has the right to tax your private home. Okay, They don't do that. And they can't tax you as a man or a woman. They don't do that either. What they'll do is they'll call you a resident and they'll claim that you live in a dwelling and they'll tax that. Right. Now, if you accept that, if you accept the term uh, title, legal title, resident, and you accept that, yes, I live in a dwelling, yeah, you've got to pay council tax then. You've agreed. You've consented. We've got to get into these legal titles. So resident, what does resident mean? Resident is the person who does not own the property. The resident is the person who is conducting commerce within the property. So if you're a resident, they're considering you as acting within commerce. And then you go dwelling. Well, what does that mean? Break the dwelling, the word down, de-well-in. Okay, there's a word well in there. Okay, so what it is, this goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. It comes from the uh, terminology husband. Now, you ask the average person, what is, what's a husband? And they go, oh, married man. Nope, <laughs> doesn't mean that. It comes from the word husbondi. Got the word bond in there. The husband stands for house. House bond I. Oh, okay. What's that? Well, that was applied to a serf or a slave who lived upon the Lord's land and the Lord allowed the slave to live in a house. Husband, I, under a bond. So you still have to pay the Lord. That gave the man or the serf, the slave, um, resources. So a woman would go looking for a man with resources and then get herself a husband. Husband, I. Hmm. Now, a husband, I, lives in a D well in. And you go, okay, what's dwelling me? Well, the word means well. If you live in your home and you own it outright, you're doing well. The word d or the suffix d is the opposite of the of the word. D well is the opposite of well. So you're, you're not, not doing, doing well. well. Yeah. Exactly. You're not doing well. And you're living in your master's hut, not doing well. <laughs> So that's why the council tax say we're going to tax your dwelling because they consider you a serf who's bonded to the state. That's it's all in the language. It took me years to decipher all this. <laughs> mm. Oh, well, I, I can imagine you're so fluent in it. And of course, as you're as you're um, explaining it, it's so bleeding obvious. <laughs> yes. You know, to put it frankly. Um, and it's and, and the, so it's very interesting because I was speaking to a gentleman earlier today on the phone who was talking about 
UK sovereignty and uh, constitution, and you've already turned that 180 degrees. Sorry. Which is which? It, well, don't be sorry. I think people. Uh, I think people will be thinking, "Wow!" I mean, this is very empowering. One of one, and and I, I wanted you to continue. I don't really want to keep stopping, but I know that through talking to many of the guests, and what I love about being able to offer guests like you a platform, and I'm so pleased that the YouTube channel is growing because it's not about me; it's about people like yourself getting the message out. But people will often say. Oh, but this is all very well, Richard. How do we enforce it? They've got the police, they've got the paramilitary, they've got the courts, you know, and they put yeah. the frighteners on. And, and if you don't take the medical intervention, they'll probably just come along and kick your door down and stick the needle in you. You know, uh, it, it, in a way, they say it's just semantics, isn't it? Yes and no. Um, we are in a war. That's the only way to say it. It's happened. You know, 2020, it began. And people like us, I mean, you're involved, you're on the front lines, I'm on the front lines, we're like the trailblazers here, okay? All I'm doing is I'm fighting on the front line, I'm discovering all this information, and then I'm throwing it behind me and says, here's some information, come along, right? Yeah. Now, if more and more people get into this, then there's going to be like a, a critical mass, and then people are just going to figure it out. They don't have to figure it out all of it, because it's intensely complicated. If you start getting into the trust, ecclesiastical law, um, there's some heavy going stuff. Uh, if you, you know, how money works, all this. But if you can get the basics right, and we can get enough people who want to take back their authority, want to become free, want to take their rights back, and they want to learn this stuff, then they can do it from their own home using the pen. So they can start doing letters and notices, take it step by step, make it simple. Like, for example, 15 minute cities is so easy to topple, it's unbelievable. People have just got to wake up to what's going on. Everyone's panicking. No, 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 no. Yes. Too many people are waiting to be saved. Do not wait to be saved. First of all, you've got to get the sovereign mindset. That's key. Okay. Right. This is what we do with uh, the, the sovereign workshop. I hold a sovereign workshop every week and I help people to break the slave mentality. Let's just touch on the slave mentality and we'll get back to 50 minute cities. There's some questions that I ask people and I test them to see if they've got the slave mentality or the sovereign mentality, okay? Now, I'll ask you the question. You don't have to answer it, okay? And everyone listening and watching this, all right, just think of the answer in your brain. Don't say anything, okay? What's your credit rating? Now, if a number popped in there and you were going to tell me what your credit rating is, sorry to tell you, but you were brainwashed. You've got the slave mentality the sovereign would say i didn't give anyone authority to give me a credit rating who the hell has given me a credit rating someone out there that i don't know has decided to give me a credit rating not only have they given me a credit rating but they're selling my private details to anyone who wants to buy it get that man here in front of me now okay <laughs> that's the sovereign mindset so all of you said, oh, my credit rating is this bit. Sorry, mm. you were a slave. Here's another question for you. What's your national insurance number? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Yes, if you're yeah. thinking of your national insurance number, sorry to tell you, you've got the slave mentality. You've got to break this. You've got to break this brainwashing. Again, you'd say, how dare someone give me a national insurance number? Did I ask for it? I yes. don't think I did. Did I fill out some form saying, please give me a national insurance number? Suddenly no. you start thinking of the prisoner. I am not a number, Patrick McGowan. You know, yes. they were telling you back then. Yes. They put it in films and TV programmes to tell you this. They, I think the first one was Wizard of Oz. Yes. <laughs> they're telling you this. Stuff. They put it in Matrix and all these other films and they're telling you. So, uh, but yes. But we've so, become so thick and so indoctrined, uh, you know, the system from birth through the educational system, through the yes. work place we the, the language that you've been breaking down has become so universal that we you know and as soon as they say what is your name you're you're already stating it and right. of course you don't even notice the capitalization that it's the same as on a tombstone you yep. don't notice that and um all those things so yes give us some more of your sovereign minded questions yes it's, so yes national insurance number so straight away, you've got to break your slave mentality. Here's another thing as well. 
I get it all the time. People contact me all the time, and they say this. They normally say this: "Am I allowed to do the thing?" Right. And I'm going well. If you don't have a pre-existing contract with somebody, and you're not going to cause any harm, then yes, you can do it. You see, if you're asking yourself, "Am I allowed to do it?" then you're mentally trapped. Do you see yes. how the government have done it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so. You see, the problem is, is most people are living in fear right now. Millions of people all over the planet, they're living in fear. But the reason is they are trapped in their own mind. They can't escape it. I mean, I had to do something back in, I think it was 2021. I was seeing news reports of people setting themselves on fire due to mandates for a medical procedure. And this is it. I said, I, I, I know. My I know. God. And I was like almost going, I've got to reach out to these people. The, the, oh my god but you, you can understand the brainwashing at that point yeah so it's me i said who the hell's going to give me a mandate i mean the, the lockdown I, didn't apply to me i was out there well if i loved it because the roads were empty <laughs> yeah absolutely well i would i mean I, I i was out there making videos and oh the, I, I would either have people saying oh brilliant richard you're bringing because i was doing walks and and stuff mm. and i was bringing the outside to those people who daren't go out and um, so I was doing that. So I'd either have people saying, oh, thank God, you know, you're bringing, we don't go out, we don't want to get it. And they, they bought into it, but they were pleased to have somebody going about showing them the outside world. Because on the other flip side, you had those people saying you're spreading COVID, you're, yeah. uh, you know, you're not wearing a mask, you're interacting with people, you're even riding your bike or in your car and you're not wearing a mask in your car. It's like, for oh, goodness sake. Uh, and so, yeah, in the and. I remember one time I was in the supermarket buying some food and somebody said to me, can you put your mask on? And I said to him, well, I can, but I choose not to. I said, you asked me the wrong question. You meant, will I put it on? And the answer is, no, I won't. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a, a, a highlight of the lockdown for me, I suppose, because <laughs> he just went, oh, uh. <laughs> I, I was waiting for someone to say that to me. I went into petrol stations and shops and no one said anything. But yeah. I think you might have been the, the skinhead or something. Well, exactly. We've both, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. We both got the same hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> He's brutal. He is brutal, but we love him. <laughs> that would, oh, by the way, just something I discovered about hair loss. It's, uh, it's your diet that causes this, unfortunately. Nutrient deficiency. Is that what it is? Yeah. So I you're telling me right. for the nearly 60 years I've been on this earth, I've been nutrient deficient. I don't know. Here's me eating all this organic food and everything. Yeah. Maybe maybe in a few months' time it'll start. <laughs> it I'll, I'll end up with an afro or something. <laughs> my colour's coming back um, ever since I changed my diet, but um, I, I digress. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bonus, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I studied everything. It's not just the financial system or the legal system. It's cancer global warming, all of the lies, all of it. So I've been busy. <laughs> Good man. Anyway, yes. um, 15 minute cities. So let's get into this. Um, right. There's, there's two areas that the government can control this two, this 15 minute city. One is through facial recognition when you're walking down the street and the other is through the use of your car. Okay. Now, one of these, they're quite relatively simple to solve. The first one, CCTV is not facial recognition, everybody. There's a big difference. Now, CCTV just picks up whatever's on the street. So if I'm walking down the street and there's a jewellery shop and they've got a security camera on the outside and they just catch a picture of me as I'm walking along, no harm done. I'm in the public... I'm in common land, okay, no harm done. That's CCTV. Facial recognition is very, very different because what they're doing with facial recognition is they're taking that image and then they're going to look you up. So they're going to find out who you are. Well, wait a minute. No one has the right to do that. You can't look someone up without cause. So, in other words, this is how it works. Um, let's say you harm me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's say you reverse into my car, you bump my car, and I manage Ooh. to take a picture of it, and you run off. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've gone. and went, oh, God. Well, I now have the right to look you up. Oh. Because you <laughs> yes. caused 
the problem. Yes, that's and I've not owned up to it. I've run away. Yeah, you, you've run off. You've run off. So that's it. I've got a picture of you. I can give it to a private detective and say, there you go. Go and look him up, and I'll serve you notice and sue you for damages. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's here already. Yes. <laughs> it, I wasn't difficult to find, was I? No. <laughs> so there has to be a cause, all right? So if you're on CCTV and then someone looks you up, and then sends you a fine, they don't have the right to do that. There is no contract. Remember that informed consent we spoke about earlier? Yes. So all you have to do, this is very simple. You can serve notice on any of these councils. This is where people have got to get proactive, all right? Please don't do petitions. Um, I know there's a lot of people saying, oh, let's do a mm. petition. Mm. No, that's a trap. The government has a department that sets up to petitions to petition against government. <laughs> Why do you think they do that? Yes. You see, the problem with a petition, if you petition, you're accepting the obligation. Yes, That's of course. the trap. Yes. But if I turn around and say, well, I'm not even obligated, why, 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 why would I even petition it? Absolutely. I, yeah. <laughs> There's the sovereign mindset again. You know, so if you petition, you've, you've accepted the obligation and now you're contracted and you've just signed. And a petition does not hold any weight in a court of law. Because it's no matter how many signatures are on it, it's only considered one voice because it's one document. Ah, so yeah. you've got to get away from petitions, people. You've got to get and start doing your own notices at home on your computer and serve notice on the council or the department that's going to be doing this uh, CCTV nonsense. And all you're doing is you serve notice to say, I hereby give you notice that I do not authorise you to use my image in any way, shape or form. You do not have the right to look up my details and I do not accept any contracts whatsoever. Failure to do so will result in a fine of damages, say £100,000. Thank you very much. Boom. Get it witnessed, two witnesses, send it Royal Mail, registered mail. You've got to start using Royal Mail. Do not use websites, texts, mobile phones, non don't do that. Paperwork, people, wet ink signatures. So that's the, that's the CCTV done easily because if you get a, a ticket, you can say, well, I never contracted. Right, I yeah, where's obviously. the consent? Where's, where's the, the consent? consent? And they, the, the people behind government can't use, can't use uh, assumed consent. In other words, your silence means you consented because no. I sent, I you've sent you've a told them, yes, you've given them a notice. This is absolutely um, fantastic. Simple as that. Simple as that. You go, boom, I've served you notice, done. That's equity law, by the way. Equity law operates above acts and statutes. Acts and statutes are very low down on the totem pole. Very low down. In fact, if you start learning the system, it's in the acts and statutes only work in the jurisdiction of the debtor, which is called a democracy. And that only applies to members of the public, citizens and civilians. Well, I'm none of them. Yes. Um, but anyway, so that's that. Now, the, the car one is going to be a bit more difficult. However, <laughs> there's a silver line into this one. I think people are really going to enjoy this one. Right. Have you heard? We've got to start at the beginning. So I'm going to try and explain. See, the problem is, is I have to explain how the system works so you understand the solution. So yes. a lot of people want a simple solution to an answer. Uh, to but it's, it's, good to know this, it's good to know the system because presumably you can apply that to different things or at least the, the, the mindset to yes. different things. Yes. The key is the mindset. Language is the second thing. Learn to read got to learn to read and once you learn to read is paperwork get your paperwork in order get used to writing out notices and affidavits and all the rest of it and signing stuff anyway so let's start at the beginning you've heard um of a certain german guy who wants us to eat bugs eat the bugs mm. and he's famous for saying a quote where he says you will own nothing and you'll be happy yes if only yeah. he had a cat you know, the one thing he hasn't <laughs> yes, got yes. is a cat to stroke. That's the, you know, that's the one <laughs> thing the poor bugger hasn't get, got. Yeah, Maybe we'll cats don't like him. him. Yeah, yeah, probably true, actually, because yeah. he doesn't like animals, that's for sure. They want to kill, them, kill all yeah. the animals. They want to kill all the pets, don't they? Want to don't they? Yeah, animals. that's right. But um, anyway, now, a lot of people believe that the Agenda 2030 means that they are going to take away everything we own. And I've got some bad news for you. No, they've already done it. You don't own anything now, legally. Hmm. I'm going to use air quotes, everybody, legally. And I'm also going to say this system is not legitimate, not legitimate in any way, shape or form. So don't panic, everybody. And there is a way out if you know how the system works. So what have they done? Why, why do we not own anything? 
well, if you say you own something, it doesn't mean you own it. And you go, oh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Huh? Well, ownership. Right? Everyone's heard of the word ownership. That's maritime law. You're entering onto a ship called owner, ownership. Now, when you say you've got a, um, say this cup of coffee. Yeah. Okay? Now, I can make a claim that I own it. But does that mean I also have the rights to it? And it, does it mean I also have title to it? No. You can own something, but then have, not have the rights to it and also not have title to it. So, for example, if you're a landlord, you, I'm using air quotes, everybody, yep. you own the property, the land, okay, the, the house, but you rent it out. So you own it, but the tenant has the rights to use it. You don't. So a lot of people think when they say they own something, they own it outright, that you've got full and clear title and you have all the rights to it. And I go, no, you don't. So what's happened is, is throughout, this has been going on for thousands of years, okay? It's the system which is called commerce. I don't have time to go into it now, but it's basically a pagan religion, all right? When you start, oh, right, okay. Yeah, you start digging deep into this. When you start learning how the courts operate, and now, oh, that's another subject all on its yeah. own. But anyway, so we'll get you back. We'll get you back for, <laughs> for the pagan. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll dig. I've been digging deep. So, um, but anyway, so the way it works in commerce. Uh, you can only control what you create, all right? So you have to create it. So if I created the cup and the, and the coffee and everything like that, if I created the, I made the cup, yes, I made the coffee and all of it, then I have full entitled rights to it. I own it, I created it, okay? Now, everything that's made today, like your car, mm. uh, there will be what is called a manufacturer's statement of origin, okay? So the car is made. And then there's a manufacturer's statement of origin. That is the original document to say where that car came from and who made it. Say, so say it's Henry Ford. It won't be him himself, obviously, but no. Henry Ford will sign off on it. There'll be a stamp, blah, blah, blah. That goes off to a department within the government. They securitize it. They'll create a certificate of conformity. The certificate of conformity would go to the dealer. So the dealer has a certificate of conformity, and then you walk into the showroom to buy your brand new Ford whatever for £50,000, right? And, of course, the uh, dealer turns around to you and says, um, would you like us to register it? And, of course, because you're stupid, and you go, mm. OK. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, OK, <laughs> yeah, <Molly. laughs> OK, Yogi. <laughs> this is how... Because the thing is, is the word register means handing over ownership. Right. So the dealer is saying to you, would you like to hand own over ownership? And because people are illiterate, go, OK. Yeah. So what happens is, is the car is then registered with DVLA. The certificate of conformity then goes to DVLA. It's operating as a trust now. You've entered into a trust. The DVLA is a corporation operating as a trust, right? They have the certificate of conformity. They have like the, the asset to the trust that's gone into the trust, OK? Technically, technically, you're the grantor of the trust. So you're the one who's put the, the certificate into the trust. And they are the trustees, but they do a little dirty flip and they make you the trustee. So you will get a logbook back and it will say registered keeper. Hmm. And if you look on that logbook, it'll even say this is not proof of ownership. Because yes, you don't own yes it. I've seen that. Yeah, you don't own it. You're now the registered keeper, which you is why the police can take it away from you and you can't do anything about it. Exactly. You've contracted. Mm. You've allowed it to happen, you see. That's why they can seize it. Now, remember, the police have no authority at all. This is the thing with the police. The police have no authority at all. Zero. Not like 1%, 2%. No, none. None. Mm. Okay? They are tra they're trapping you with legal entrapment. So, yes, be absolutely correct. So, if you've registered your car with DVLA, then that means that they, they own it. If you don't play ball, they can take the car off you because yeah. you're in breach of contract. Okay. Now it also means you've uh, you've agreed to uh, the DVLA uh, highway code, so you're now liable for all of that. Yes. And it also means that you've got to pay tax on it because it's government property now. That's what the road tax is for. By the way, the road tax does not pay for the maintenance of the road. Well, you can see that in the roads at the moment with all yeah. the potholes. I mean, if it, if it did, <laughs> we'd be laughing because of the amount of cars there are. But you're quite right. Yeah, clearly. It, it does. Because remember what they call, they call it. 
road fund license. So what does that mean? What you're doing is paying permission to drive on the road. <laughs> That's what the tax is for. Yes. So anyway, and, so you, and yet on your passport, you should have you know the freedom to travel. Yes. It says on your passport that you you know you should you you've got the freedom to travel again. It's somebody giving you permission. I I, I guess. Yes. That now, you don't passport. actually need. But you don't but, need it. Yeah. The passport actually stops you from travelling. <laughs> when you learn how it actually works, it sends you into a postman. But we could get into that another yeah. another time. Um, but yeah, so the DVLA obviously, and that also means that you have to MOT it. Okay. Yes. Now, an MOT has got nothing to do with the reliability or the function of the car. It's actually a tax inspection. So you're actually submitting your government property once a year for tax inspection. That's what you're doing. And you're paying for it. And, of course, because you're now using um, government property, what do you need? You need a license because you need yes. permission to use government property. That's why you need a driver's license. And, of course, what do you have on the front of the car? Now, you have a license plate, which is a government number, which means you're driving government property under license. Now, because of all this... The government, or should I say the politicians behind it, because government's a legal fiction, have found a loophole for this 15-minute city. Because they know they can't stop you travelling as a citizen or a subject or a civilian because it violates the passport. Because if you look at the passport, there's a decree by the Queen and it says anyone who holds the passport is, can travel from port to port and you can't be stopped. Right. So the politicians have a problem. They can't violate that. So what they've done is they said, well, you've entered into a completely separate contract here. Yes. You're in with the DVLA now, and you're in with the UK now. So you're with the UK corporation, you're in the DVLA corporation, nothing to do with the Queen. That's a completely separate jurisdiction. That's England is another corporation. Britain is another corporation. Great Britain is another corporation. United Kingdom, they're all separate jurisdictions. This is why the Magna Carta doesn't apply. Magna Carta doesn't apply in the UK corporation. That's like saying the Magna Carta applies in McDonald's. So <laughs> it doesn't. So, um, but anyway, so that's how they're doing it. So because you're driving government property and they can say that you can't drive more than 15 minutes, it doesn't violate the passport. You see, yes. that's how they've done it. That's the dirty trick, you see. Okay, so what is the solution? And it's very simple. Now, it's going to take a lot of us to do it, by the way, because if one person does this on their own, they're going to get hounded. But the simple solution is deregistration. You take your car back. It's that simple. You just say to DVLA, no, thank you. I don't want to register my car anymore. Thank you very much. But I'd like to terminate with the DVLA. I'd like to take my property back. Remember, the entire system is based on consent. Yes. They can't say no. They can't say no, because if someone says no, I'll want to know who. Who says no? DVLA can't say no, it's a corporation, it doesn't exist. So I will need to know the name of the person who works for DVLA who says, I can't take back my car. Are you joking? I'll look you up, I'll find out where you live, I'll serve notice on you for not letting me have my car back. What right do you have to not let me have my car back? It's my property, isn't it? So you take your property back. Well, they argue that because you have given your title then that's why you can't, we, you know, they'll say, well, you gave it to us, we don't want to give it to you back. I can take it back at any time. Remember, I am the grand tour of the trust. Ah, I yes, granted it. Yes, yes. <laughs> they yes. can squirm all they like. They will bluff you. They'll say, you can't do it. Right, give me the name of the person who works for DVLA who says I can't do it. No, no. one is going to step up to that. No. no one. Because guess what? Burden of proof is on them, isn't it? If they say that I can't take my car back, all right, prove it. They can't. They can't do it. Because I'll say, give me the name of the person who's making a claim that they own my car. They can't. No, no. one's going to step up to that because that means they'll uh, admit to the fraud, the scam. Yes. Because everyone thought they owned it. They didn't know what they were doing. No, inf no informed consent. But here's the good thing. <laughs> this is what's really going to get people going into this. If you deregister de your car, take your car back. You have the right to the manufacturer's statement of origin. That's yours. I want it. That is worth the same value as your car. It's like a, it's like a note, right? It's like that. Yeah. You know, this is a promissory note. It's a security, right? Security yeah. instrument, promissory note. Okay. 
Well, that um, manufacturer statement of origin is like a deed, if you like. It has a monetary value within commerce, and it has the same value as the car when it was new. So if your car was £50,000, that certificate, the um, manufacturer statement of origin, is also worth 50000 So, Oh, right. So where is that kept? Ah, now this is going to take some digging. Oh, OK. Because the DVLA, we've got people on it now. We've got a lot of members in the sovereign fraternity now. There's a lot of us. There's thousands of us all over the world. We're, we're, we're expanding. Um, Good for you. Yeah, we're, we're fighting this. And um, we're getting uh, stonewalled at the minute. But the DVLA is making a, um, or people, employees at the DVLA are beginning, are saying they um, destroyed it. <laughs> they didn't. They're lying because actually what happened was is that uh, Gordon Brown sold them. So, see, the way it worked is uh, a couple of decades ago, you used to be the owner. All right. So the olden days, the old logbook said that you were the registered owner. Words to that effect. Yeah. But all you'd done is you'd given up the secure, the, the, the legal interest to it, the controlling interest to the car in the olden days. All right. So you still owned it. Hmm. But you gave up the controlling interest, so DVLA still controlled it, right? Then they changed the logbook and they did a switcheroo, okay? And they changed the, the it to registered keeper, and that's when they said not proof of ownership. Now, yeah. when they did that, they had billions of dollars worth of these um, uh, manufacturers' statement of origins, billions of dollars worth. And Gordon Brown used that to prop up the GDP of the UK corporation. He sold them all on the, on the right. stock market. Oh, OK. So that, that, I mean, it, it's like a, a parallel, but probably slightly different to the birth certificate thing. Very in similar. Which, in which that is a similar area. Very similar. And we can get into that another time if we, yeah. we get low on time. But we can get into the birth certificate, how credit creates. I'll give you this little nugget of truth, um, which you might know this. There is no debt. All right. So people out there think they've got a mortgage debt and a car, car loan debt or whatever, or student loan debt or credit card, whatever it is. No, you don't. You're the creditor. You're the creditor. Yes. There is no debt. You've been tricked into paying a mortgage company back. There is no utility bills or gas bills. That's already been prepaid for through your Sester KV trust. And here's another little nugget I'll just leave you with. <laughs> if, you, if the bank forecloses on you, say you've got a house and you've got a mortgage on it, and they foreclose, they're supposed to pay you, and you're supposed to keep the house. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, I, I mean, everything that you have said certainly registers with me. It will, no doubt, with the audience, be getting their brains whirring, going, is this possible? Can this be true? This is like everything I've ever known all these years is, is turned yes. on my head. Everything. And anybody who's who goes down the various rabbit holes start to realise that so much of life is theatre and so much of it is a, a huge con. And as you've so, so rightly said, we're paying for stuff that we've already effectively paid for the minute we were born. Yes, that's so, why it's called repayments. You're doing it again, repayments. Repaying. And there are people laughing because yeah. we are dumb. Yes. And however... Do you think, and here's a question I've been asking quite a few people, because of where we are now, more people are waking up to this whole system like yes. never before. Yes. That, that you know, the, 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 um, the pandemic, as much as that was planned to take place, has actually made a lot more people have to wake and and because we're also being thrown with all these different things people you know they've not been very clever is no. is how i've seen it because they could have let this go over the next 10 20 years and we would just gone along with it but suddenly yes. people are waking up we're discovering people like you Pete and the message is getting out there people are doing it in slightly different ways but it is coming out and, you know, certainly more power to people like you. I feel it is our time. Yes. And and whilst who knows what's going to happen in the next few weeks, because I feel like something's been planned again. Yeah, maybe. But um, it is very much as if the boat is writing itself, using the maritime thing. The boat yeah. is writing itself rather than being upside down world that we've been in and yes. and and slowly and surely it, it's it's going to happen 
Well, they call it the apocalypse, which means basically the great unveiling when people finally see. That's what apocalypse is. But you're absolutely right. This um, the lockdown nonsense in 2020 woke a lot of people up because they went looking for this uh, common law, which we, if we get in, you know, we'll probably touch on it another time. But when you get into the common law stuff, it's not long before you discover the birth certificate. And mm. then when you discover that, you think, oh, my God, I'm a bonded slave. And I've, I'm sitting on a trust fund worth $100 million, and I'm struggling to put the heating on. Yes. Yes. So, um, and this is, the, I mean, this is where it becomes absolutely disgusting oh, that people will say, oh, there's an energy crisis. Oh, and we're going to put your prices up. Uh, and yet there's so much fuel around. Oh, and yes. people are, you know, just oppressing people. So, and, and yet it doesn't really matter what the price is because... You could actually afford it anyway. It doesn't really oh, matter. Pennies. It's pennies. The thing yeah. with oil is, this is, nothing, this is something else I research. Oil is an abiotic hydrocarbon. It's never going to run out. It's created deep within the earth. Okay, You're never, ever going to run. It's like saying that the sun is going to run out of hydrogen one day. Well, maybe, but in 50 billion years' time. Should we start worrying now? Hmm. So oil's never going to run out. And another thing as well, this emissions. People say the car is polluting. No, the internal combustion engine actually fertilizes <laughs> when you start learning what's the two main emissions that come out of the exhaust pipe of a petrol a modern day petrol car water co2 plant food and yeah. the rest of the stuff that comes out like uh, the carbon carbon that comes out and other things like carbon monoxide is um metabolized by nature bacteria and plants absorb it, it it's all fertilizer so this or oh, it's pollutant no that's something else i researched it's another scam Mm. This, um, well, this is it. Everything that, that seems to be bad is a scam. That's right. That's right. They demonise uh, red meat and all the rest of it and trying to get us to eat the bugs. and uh, It just goes on and on and on. People just got to wake up to it. It's all a lie. The entire system is so fragile, it's unbelievable because it's yeah. one giant lie. <laughs> yes. And, and, and that's the thing. They're, they must be constantly looking over their shoulder that it's not going to be exposed. Whereas the truth, you don't have to. It's, no. it, it, you know, the truth is the truth. It is. Uh, Pete, it's been absolutely brilliant to talk to you. Um, I hope that we can get you back and go into the birth certificate stuff and some more other stuff. I think people were going to be pleading with me, get Pete back, get Pete back, <laughs> because you've put it over so eloquently um, and so simply and that people will, those people that sort of ventured into it will completely get where you are. And those people who this is new to will have a much better understanding. You know, I've not had a guest who's put it so really plainly as you have, which has been Thank you. fantastic. Um, where can people find out more and, sure. and, and, and learn about the, um, the whole stuff that you're doing, the, the Sovereign Project? Okay. Um, if you go on my website, which is thesovereignproject.live, okay, I've got some bits and pieces here. And um, there's links to our social media, so you can get hold of us there. Um, so, yeah, so it's the uh, Sovereign Project dot live. Now, there are some um, e contact emails on there, okay? So uh, some of the contact emails is um, if there's anyone who wants to work with us in collaboration, there's a collaboration email there. Now, we are also working on solutions, so it's not just about getting the information out there. We're working on the solutions, and we do have the solutions to it all, but we do lack the manpower to make it happen. So we don't do doom and gloom. I'm done. We do yeah. solutions. So uh, this, very quickly, That's brilliant. I mean, that is so, so brilliant. <laughs> so, I mean, this is it, you know, because I've gone through this process myself, and people have said, Richard, you're just, you know, just informing us, and we're getting scared. And I was aware of that, and I thought, you know, I've got to now try and find positive solutions because we've got to keep people energized and feeling good about the future, yeah. and find find ways around all of this nonsense. And there so, is, there's so, a solution to it all. Yeah. Um, if, if we've got time, I'll just touch on a very just. Mm, please do. Um, so some of the things we're trying to put together, um, obviously collaborations is an email ad address. What we're trying to do as well, we're trying to set together a business directory. So this is businesses who want to be free, that they've, they're sick of the uh, oppression. So we're trying to set up a network of businesses. This is global. OK, now, once we get enough businesses in place, we can help with the solutions. We can help with PMA, set you up as a PMA uh, and cooperatives. Um, we can help with crypto solutions. Also, what we want to try and do is to bring the gold back over here. Well, people need to research that. This is a note made out of real gold. No third party risk, no tax to pay, nothing to do with the Bank of England. I want to get that. But we need enough businesses involved. 
we have a crypto specialist so you can get in contact with her um if you're ex-police and ex-military and you realize you've been used we have a a guy waiting for you there's an email address get in contact maybe you can help us with our own sovereign constables we're trying to put together we've got trust specialists so if you want to put a trust together get in contact with the trust specialist we've got workshops operating all over the country and even in different countries now, okay, where you can go once a week, meet people like us, and they'll do your presentation and sh take you through this. Hold your hand, take you through it, show you how it's done. Um, also, we have just about, well, we are uh, announcing an online course. So if people want to learn this, I will be holding an online course probably on a Monday evening. People can sign up to that, and I will take you through it. And I'll start at the very beginning. I'll hold your hand. It's not complicated. I'll tell you the basics and I'll, I'll take you all the way through it. It takes about 22 weeks. So yeah, if you want to get involved, sovereignproject.live and there's plenty of contact emails there. Fantastic. How about that? That is brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, do stay in touch. Well, I'll stay in touch with you anyway sure. um, because I know people will be asking questions and I'll no doubt ferry um, or forward emails across and what have you. What you said um, about the paperwork um, is so key, isn't it? Uh, about it really is. writing and getting it written down. Um, I know this uh, a friend of mine called Stuart, who will appreciate the call out, has been for the last, I don't know, three, four months from a video that I made where I was fairly ignorant of this i mean i'd sort of read it before in the long distance past and and i was saying but i you know i'm an individual i'm i'm my own person and he said you're not a person that's correct not <laughs> he a said, person you're not a person and i said oh come on that's just semantics isn't it what are you talking about and he said it's not have it's a look not. in black's law dictionary and i i went and bought the bloody thing uh, which is not cheap <laughs> and not cheap. Uh, i i'm not a person i'm no. a living man that's right. I am a living man and I'm not a citizen. I'm not, I'm not a subject or I'm not no legal title. I'm not a mister either. Don't know. Yes, it's exactly. Fun. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's it's an amazing and a fascinating journey, but it's so empowering. I think that's what people don't realize as all the impression like an onion skin. Yeah. As, as you've described in this video, it's been it's been wonderful because you've been pulling off these layers and people, I hope, have been able to see that there is light there and is. there is freedom and, and we can be free again. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you so much, Pete. I really, really enjoyed the conversation. It's been fantastic. And we will, I will keep in touch. It yeah, will be sure. great. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, um, another explosive um, interview. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, and I will be back with more of these um, and do cheek do keep in tune but for the meanwhile unfortunately i have to go uh, big thanks to pete until the next time goodbye